Hi everyone. I came across this story and I wanted to discuss it with you because many of us don't really know who's in control of the fiat money we have, especially in savings. Linda Martin of Los Angeles had never been charged with a crime, but the FBI seized her $40,200 savings and held it for two years. Here's what happened. Linda thought she had found a safe place to store the cash that she and her husband were setting aside to buy a home. But her safe deposit box at U.S. Private Vault in Beverly Hills was seized in a March 2021 FBI raid. The warrant specifically directed the FBI agents not to conduct a criminal search or seizure of individual customers' boxes. They were just supposed to identify owners of the boxes so that they could claim their property once the investigation was done. But the FBI instead acted on their dastardly plan to search and try to forfeit the contents of any box worth more than $5,000 on their March 22, 2021 raid of U.S. private vaults. The raid was the result of an indictment accusing U.S. private vaults, the business, not individual vault renters, of money laundering and other crimes. But in executing the warrant, the government didn't just seize the company's business property. Upon the pretense of wanting to take a relatively worthless metal rack of boxes, federal agents broke into every security deposit box and emptied them of their contents. The FBI made a video record of the contents of each box, including opening up sealed envelopes and holding the letters they contained up to a camera. Linda was stunned when she got the notice in June of 2021, saying that the FBI intended to take and keep her $40,200. She didn't have a clue as to why the government took her money, and she ended up as an uninformed, angry human being filing a petition that gave the FBI free reign to decide whether to return any of her hard-earned resources. As late as January 2023, the FBI wouldn't tell Linda anything except that her matter was pending. In March 2023, Linda got totally fed up and filed a class action lawsuit. The month after Linda filed her nationwide class action lawsuit with the help of the Institute for Justice, the FBI hurriedly tried to return her nest egg to avoid any accountability. Although Linda now has her money back, her fight to end the FBI's practice of sending unconstitutional forfeiture notices will continue in federal court in Washington, D.C. Linda said, and I quote, I'm relieved to finally have my savings back, but it has been a confusing and frustrating process from the moment it was taken. I had to prove my innocence to keep my own money. No one should be treated that way, and I'm going to keep fighting so that others don't have to suffer the same way I did. Thank you, Linda. The FBI had no idea who Linda was, yet it tried to forfeit her life savings simply because her safe deposit box contained more than $5,000, said the Institute of Justice senior attorney Robert Former. By never forcing the Bureau to say what it thinks someone has done wrong, the FBI notices enable the sort of corrupt policing for profit that caused Linda's forfeiture nightmare to drag on for over two years. The FBI's forfeiture notices violates the Fourth Amendment, which protects people from unreasonable search and seizures by the government, and the Fifth Amendment, which gives people protection against the taking of their property by the government without compensation. An earlier Institute for Justice lawsuit on behalf of several U.S. private vault customers successfully stopped the FBI's forfeiture proceedings against those renters, with the judge declaring that the FBI's notices were anemic. Unfortunately, that October 2021 ruling against the government only applied to the named plaintiffs in that lawsuit, leaving people like Linda still fighting for their property. So let me explain the gravity of what I just said. In October of 2021, there was a ruling that the FBI was wrong to take the people's money from the specific U.S. private vault location. This was only four months after Linda received the notice. The October ruling applied to seven other renters at that location, but because of our corrupt legal system, that ruling against the government only applied to the named plaintiffs in that lawsuit, 
leaving people like Linda still fighting for their property. And even if the other seven plaintiffs that won their case in October 21 wanted to contact Linda and the others that had votes there, I'm sure they didn't have and weren't about to be given access to their names and information so that the government could keep the property of the ones that weren't properly educated and informed. Basically, Linda waited an additional year and a half to get her money back after a judge said the FBI was wrong. This is theft and corruption at its best. Linda's lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court of the District of Columbia seeks to halt administrative forfeiture proceedings for everyone who has received one of these FBI deficient notices. We're thrilled that Linda can finally get her life back on track, said Institute for Justice Attorney Bob Linden. But we still have to fight for the many others whose lives have been derailed by the FBI's forfeiture machine. Now let's talk. I'm sure you heard by now that Liberty Safe just gave up the goods to the government and let them have the combination to somebody safe. Everybody in the red states and patriotic movement trusted Liberty Safe, and they got let down big time. But they should have known this was inevitable. We can't trust these folks with our stuff. You better hear me. Figure out a way to take care of yourself, your family, and your stuff, or someone else is going to handle it. It still floors me sometimes to see how many people trust the government to take care of them and trust banks to take care of their resources. I think it's all by design. I know you all think the same thing. What we've done is we've gotten caught up in this whole television and let everybody else think for you instead of thinking for yourself situation. We need to teach ourselves again how to think strategically. We need to teach our children how to think strategically. You know, if there's a problem going on and they don't have an immediate solution, a lot of people give up. I've seen it. And they don't sit there and think, okay, how can I solve this problem? This problem is solvable, but our thinking skills have gone down since we've spent so much time watching television, playing video games, watching movies, and watching sports, and those kinds of things. So we have to start taking care of ourselves. I talked to someone today that said that they had been thinking about gardening. And after our conversation, this person said that they were going to start gardening because they had been thinking about it and they realized that it's another protection for themselves and their families. Those of you that have areas where you can plant things, go out online and figure out when you can plant what and start planting things so you'll have some things that you can eat. Those of you that have yards or areas even in your house where you can plant, you might want to go start planting some things. Start learning how to cultivate things on your own so that we won't always have to depend on the grocery store and the big box stores like Walmart and Target and Costco and and, uh, the others. What we want to do is learn how to be self-sufficient and depend on each other and not depend on people who can snatch things away from us in the blink of an eye. That's not working for us right now. This is a heads up, by the way. I'll be conducting a 12-week boot camp in late October, all the way through the new year, so that you can be equipped to take care of your own. More details will be coming later this month. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, be safe out there. This is Sherry Peel Jackson, signing out.